Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's talk about the presidential jets that Biodun consults federal government as Utami tackles a musun. The Ogun state governor, Dakwa Abiodun, consulted the federal government to resolve the dispute over the Ogun free trade zone and the seizure of presidential debts by Zhongshan Fusion Industrial Investment Co. Patutomi accused the former governor of Ogun state, um, Governor Ibikunle Amusu, of cancelling his property deal, which led to financial losses and the revocation of his contract, adding that Amusu's actions brought about the seizure of the jets. I'm also responded by accusing Utomi of making unreasonable demands and having an entitlement mentality, stating that the property deal was inappropriate and that he had offered a refund lower than what, was, what Utomi had claimed. The dispute between Amoso and Utomi highlights ongoing tensions over property deals and con contractual obligations in Ogun State, with accusation of misconduct and financial losses on both sides. Now, joining us to discuss this is Biodun Shoumi. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so we're talking about a lot that's going on, presidential jets being seized in Paris, um, the FTZ deal, um, so many things. Now, Pat Tommy has um, gone ahead to tackle the former governor, Amosun, saying, you know what, this is the same thing that happened to me. So, of course, um, Ogun State has obviously been in breach of the contract that they've had um, with Pat Tommy, and now we're seeing this as well. But I want to get your take on this story. Well, let's just unravel some of the mysteries what has gone on? What is happening right now? Well, in relation to the um, presidential jet seizure, um, three of the jets were seized, mm. apart from two properties um, abroad. Um, the, one of the jets has been released, which is the one, the new one, acquired you know, by the presidency for Mr. President. And that is the one the president has just used to travel to France. The other two were in France for routine maintenance, you know, uh, in preparation for sale, um, which in any case um, will reduce the presidential fleet. It's better to have uh, functional fleets than to have flying coffins in the light of the death of the president of Iran, uh, Ahmadinejad, um, early this year, and also the, the death of the Malaysian vice president through plane crashes. So, Therefore, um, for me, I think it's even better with the deal the presidential fleet, probably to the size of the Americans. Uh, they have two presidential jets, yes, very expensive. The most expensive one is about $50 million, Air Force One. And um, then to maintain 10 that are not, uh, that, that are faulty or that require regular maintenance, regular repairs, we should not forget the vice president was forced to, after one and a half hours in the air, to die back, back you know, to Abuja following a fault you know, uh, plane. So, therefore, that could be a good case for procuring functional jets for Nigeria. But do we need as many as eight or ten? I doubt that. So, we need to reduce the presidential flights. The other two needs to be free. But specifically, in relation to the seizure and the comparison, uh, or the analogy being drawn by Pat Tommy by his own experience with the state government. I think um, it's a matter of regret that a very embarrassing situation like that, which we found ourselves in, uh, will be exploited by Pat Tommy to score uh, his own point or to hit back at whatever it perceived to be the wrongdoing of our Muslim wife in office. We should not forget that all the three. The two former governors, that starting from Gwenga Daniel, who signed the contract in 2007 to Amosun, who came into office in 2011, and the current pre uh, governor, that Pabiodun, who are willing, all of them are collaborating to see how they could help resolve the issue. As far as the Ogun State government is concerned, there have been four cases filed by the Chinese company, which they lost in. We have also received further information from the state government and the uh, previous administ administration of um, Ibikuli Amosu that in reality it was a dispute between two Chinese companies and therefore, and that issue has been dealt with, with, the, with uh, in the courts. But surprisingly, the Chinese company, you know, is, you know, went ahead to take the federal government to 
arbitration. While the federal government agreed to arbitration on a matter already resolved by four different courts' jurisdiction, uh, still baffles me. And that was under Malawi, uh, the Attorney General uh, under Buhari's regime. So that's a question that must be exploited and what was that about? We've seen that happening, you know, you remember the the, the Malabus case, you also remember, you know, the the recent um, the two of P and ID. P and ID or what was PDA it and ID. That's right. Which ended up um, revealing that some foreign nationals were trying to uh, defraud Nigeria in collaboration with other Nigerians, you know, some other Nigerians. So in this case, it's quite clear that if four courts prior to this arbitration had rejected the claims of the Chinese company, and that the dispute was between two Chinese companies. So why did we agree to arbitration? And to the extent that we could not get launched into it, and that for me is still baffling. It required further investigation, and I'm sure by the time more facts are out, we may end up uh, seeing a situation where um, some former public officials will have to be arrested. But for now, one has to accept, you know, the claims of the Buste government and the past uh, governors of Buste. And in any case, the party told me in his own attempt to draw an analogy with the Chinese um, issue, um, made a false start. The false start being that Utomi said it was um, Amazon cancelled the contract signed by its predecessors. That is not completely true. The contract cancelled by Amazon was signed, was awarded by Amazon and cancelled by Amazon according to him based on the false information which the company presented and that the Chinese government actually sent a cable. If that is true, then um, I think uh, Patutomi started on a false premise, you know, assuming that the contract was cancelled. The 2007 contract signed by Benga Daniel is still in force day today. The company that is supposed to manage it is the one managing it. As far as um, the Ogun State government seems, the trailers from Ogun State government seems uh, to suggest. But the other uh, company, who they are now describing as in Tadoba, which is the one that has gone to arbitration and enforced the um, award, you know, is considered to be an Italoba. So how this will be resolved depends on a lot on the federal government, the cooperation of the state government, other past government officials, and uh, the next approach. Whether there is still room to appeal, we don't know. Whether we have exhausted the appeal processes, we don't know. So there, a lot needs to be said on this issue. But on part, it only explained that contract was cancelled. It's not the first time. Contracts are cancelled routinely in Nigeria particularly if you violate the terms of the contract. And if I want to believe what the account we have in the public domain, that even Patutomi himself had been declared personal non grata before the advent of Amazon's regime, you know, by the House of Assembly under um, the, the former governor, Benga Daniel. If that is the case, the same governor, government that awarded that contract they ended up declaring him personal non grata. I think there is more to that issue than what Utomi has told us, uh, and uh, to, um, more to it than what uh, the former government, Bikunle Amosu, has told us also. So, uh, look, uh, people need to ask questions about what, why was he declared personal non grata, and why was that contract cancelled, and why is it that Utomi did not approach the court to seek for the dress? I don't want to comment on whether he was asking. Uh, he invested 50 million and was asking for the compensation of 200 million. That's beyond my remit, and I don't um, have the full facts of that. But I would have thought, Pastor told me, as a Nigerian, would have approached a very enlightened Nigerian international, would have approached the courts, you know, to seek redress. So why did he fail to do that? And why not wait until now to eat back? Okay, our, our concern is not even Otomi. Otomi is brought into the thing as one of the persons who is saying that, yes, maybe this is mm -hmm. a, the character of Ogun State government or particular governor uh, from Ogun State. But the embarrassment we got on international scene yeah. that France had to give the go-ahead, we're still trying to figure out how the federal government became even a player in such a way that they could be roped into this issue that had to do with just Ogun and whoever 
was the company or whichever was the company that was involved and why France what evidences were before France for them to uh, grant the kind of seizure that they granted three presidential jets of a country that prides itself as the giant of Africa mm -hmm. that is really something mm. so we don't understand when state governments collect loans what role does the, the, the federal government play? Let, yeah. let us try to understand that before we begin to see how it is that another country will just say, okay, one, one state collected loan, the entire country will have to pay for it. Yes. Um, in the first instance, the Nigerian government got tied into all this simply because we signed an investment treaty with China. And based on that investment treaty, um, a Chinese company, you know, uh, Guadong, you know, signed an agreement with Ogun State government to uh, to establish and manage the free trade zone in conjunction with the Ogun State government, and that's the fact of the matter. That was signed in 2017. Now, subsequently, there are problems which I learned the Chinese government was involved on which company. Because the original company set up a subs subsidiary, then we now have another Chinese company approaching the state government saying to the uh, were the rightful people to manage it. And the state government obliged at that point in time and signed a temporary agreement uh, with that Chinese company. But only to realize after a cable was received, um, according to uh, facts put to the in pub public domain, uh, to realize that it was also the same wrong company and that that company gave us um, information in order to secure that interim management contract. So they eventually served the notice to cancel it and it was canceled. So that's the company that went to court. Now, in relation to the issue of loan, subnationals have rights to obtain loan. As long as it's tied, they are the ones to pay back um, within the country. When it comes to obtaining loan outside the country, then federal government to some extent has to be involved. And I believe they do get involved because it's about um, ability to repay those loans. And quite often, those loans are tied down to the country's um, uh, federal allocation on a monthly basis so that they can recoup the money in case the government is not able to pay back. And because of that, you tend to have um, the permission of the Minister for Finance, you know, to finance that. And that has always been the case, um, as far as I am. So in, in this case, uh, Ogun State Government uh, did not obtain loan in relation to that, uh, uh, from Chinese government, in relation to that uh, free trade of Olokola. Now, the issue is very clear. When it comes to international agreements like this that could affect the country, Yes, I would be one of those who would suggest that the federal government needs a copy of that contract needs to be submitted, you know, to the Federal Ministry of Justice, you know, just uh, for them not to censure the the, the, the the contract, but with a view to ensure that the country as a whole is protected, you know, from any adverse effects of the contract being signed or to be signed. And in any case, no matter the outcome. Ogun State government would have to be responsible if Ogun State government eventually um, is found culpable and they are not able to overturn that award. The, the, the bill will have to be paid by Ogun State government, deducted by the federal government from Ogun State entitlement. So it's not really going to have to be the federal government that will pay back in the final analysis. But the most important thing is we need to learn from this and ensure that all contracts which touches on transnational issues, you know, particularly investment or otherwise, you know, needs to be scrutinized properly, not only by the Ministry of Justice officials of the states concerned, but also by Federal Ministry of Justice to ensure that we are not violating any treaty signed, um, uh, signed by the federal government with another country. That's the essence of it. It's not to censure it. It's just to ensure that there will be no adverse effects on the country in the event of a dispute like this. So for, um, for a country now that our president has been looking for foreign investors and all, how do you think this would look 
um, out there, especially if we want people to come in to invest and we want to sign a treaty as such as this. Isn't this putting us in a bad light? Are we going to see any investor coming in at this point? And what is a way for us to salvage what has happened right now? Yeah, I don't think this will have any negative um, effect on investors, foreign direct investors. The simple reason is this. It's actually a plus. The fact that investors can realize that um, no matter what happens, they have the cost to uh, the courts, you know, to seek redress if there are issues. And mm. we have seen that, and that there's a way to hold Nigeria accountable in the event of um, uh, 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 violating a contractor. So I don't think this will necessarily um, affect foreign direct investment. They are in, they, they, the most important thing for them is the profit to make the security of their investment and the environment in which they will be doing that. Uh, it has to be conducive. So um, for me, the most important thing is there's nothing wrong in us going into treaties with foreign countries, particularly uh, to assure them that they will be able to repatriate their profit or they will, their investment will be protected. Uh, they will not just be kicked out overnight. You know, and um, until this is finally resolved, we may not know eventually what actually transpired, whether this is another fraudulent um, activity involving a foreign country um, and some Nigerian officials, or whether in reality the state government, you know, has acted properly. But that speaks volumes. That speaks volumes of our procurement uh, uh, process. I, I think it's, 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 I'm seeing it in a very negative light. If our procurement process were as straightforward as it should be, these things should not be happening, where people are cutting corners. You know, I don't think this is about procurement um, process, uh, particularly in this, in this case. We have due process in every single thing within the country. Whether it's observed uh, uh, or not is a different matter completely. That's about implementation. But there is a provision for due process, even at the federal level. Uh, where you have the uh, big uh, the Bureau of Public Enterprises. Uh, governments are expected to behave in certain ways. And it's also the same thing through the states. And then you have the oversight functions being carried out by the legislative bounds, you know, which are parts, an intrinsic part of um, a, a democratic um, state like ours. Now, when it comes to uh, the process in relation to um, foreign uh, investment in our country, uh, the fact of the matter is subnationals have a right to attract investors and they have a right to go into contract with whoever they deem fit in the best interest of their country or in the best interest of their state. But we should also realize that any contract you know, signed may impact on our country as we have seen in this situation. And that is why a deal process uh, which would involve uh, not necessarily gagging the subnationals, but would involve, you know, you know, ticking the boxes uh, by the Federal Ministry of uh, Justice to ensure that contracts signed with foreign countries by subnationals or with foreign uh, companies by subnationals, you know, uh, will not in any way impact on the country negatively, either through contract default or through um, uh, expropriation of um, uh, capital or misappropriation of it. So I think that is quite very important. Well, it should not be a situation where the subnationals are being uh, vetoed by the federal government. No, we won't allow you to, 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 to sign this contract or that, simply because uh, we know the country we are in. We don't want a situation where the ruling party will be caging you know, the uh, opposition uh, ruling a state, you know, from investing, attracting investment, or di directing or discouraging investment in a state in a state in favor of another state. Hmm. We need to be very careful around that. The yeah. most important thing is to ensure that the country is protected by checking through a deal process, you know, established with the Federal Ministry of Justice. All right, All right. very well said. Um, this is where we have to wrap it up on this show right now. Thank you so much for coming, Biodun. Thank you. It was lovely having a conversation and just uh, understanding all of, that, all of this that is happening and the way to go about it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay.
All right, so we're speaking with Bill Dun Show with me. He's a public affairs analyst, and we're just talking about the presidential jets that have been seized in Paris um, because of the FTZ deal with a Chinese company and Ogun State. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with us. My name is Rumet Paulson. And I am Yamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye. Have an amazing day.